Okay, come, let's talk about Indian geography and the next topic that is soil. Now, soil has been a very important topic since its beginning. So, any living form that we say uh, has life works in a certain fashion and similarly we say soil. So, soil is very very important uh, kind of material which is found as a part of the earth crust. There is a continuous process of decay, decomposition, erosion that takes place and you have new soil formation that occurs. So similar to a kind of uh, living life, you have a life that's, that's seen in the soil. Now, if we talk about the very fundamentals, we can say it's a mixture of rocks, debris, uh, kind of small sand particles, humus, uh, air, water, so all of these totally or together are what are the formations for the soil. Now since the days we have various categories under which we have tried, we have been trying to classify soil. In the very ancient times we used to classify soil only as uh, the fertile and the sterile soil. However, Later on, during the 16th century, we believed that we could classify soil based on texture, based on color. So we could say there is red soil, yellow soil, black soil. We could say based on texture, uh, texture there is sandy soil, loamy soil, and so on and so forth. So there were various categorizations under which this was done. Also, uh, the kind of actual amount of each of the uh, components depend on the type of the soil that is there. Now this soil classification could be understood under various layers. So we broadly classify three major layers. The lowermost layer is the parent layer which is the sea horizon we say and below that sea you have the bedrock. Above the sea horizon you have B horizon which is considered as a transition between A and C and this is contained of the matter which is slowly and gradually percolating from the A. It has a little of organic content that is seen but it's mainly a kind of weathered material and then the topmost is the A horizon which is incorporated with the mineral materials, nutrients and is necessary for uh, the growth of the plant to take place. So as we already talked about the various classifications, the most standard classification in India that we use as of now is the Soil Survey of India which was established in 1956 and this classification which was laid down under the ICAR guidelines that is the Indian Council for Agricultural Research is very much similar to the USGA classification. Now based on the origin of the soil, the genesis of the soil, we can say that the soils have been classified under various categories. So alluvial soil, black soil, red and yellow soil, laterite soil, PT soil, forest soil are some of the common examples. So let's talk about these one by one. So let's talk about the very first and the most important soil which is known as the alluvial soil. Now alluvial soil is seen mostly along the riverine traps. So the Indus Brahmaputra trap and then all the delta areas of the peninsular India. So it could be Mahanadi delta, Godavari delta, Krishna delta and so on. So found in the delta areas of the peninsular India and most of the riverine tracks along the north India. It's one of the most fertile soil, covers nearly 40% of the area. 40% uh, of the soil we could say is alluvial. It is intensively cultivated. So the best agricultural, uh, agri agricultural practices are seen here. It's mainly depositional soil because of the uh, erosional processes taking place. You have transportation of the soil and with the river, you have the deposit that take place and with these depositions you have the alluvial soil that is seen. The most important thing is it is rich in potash and poor in phosphorus. Now this is a commonly asked question for most of your multiple choice questions. Uh, which soil is rich in which minerals and deficient in which? So remember those very carefully. Alluvial I repeat is rich in potash and poor in phosphorus. Then you have this alluvial soil which could be categorized under two forms. Khadar soil and Bhagar soil. Khadar soil is a newly formed soil. Both of those, Khadar or Bhangar, have the calcareous root, the calcareous nodules or the calcium concentration uh, concretions that are seen within the soil. But Khadar is a new soil. It is formed by the deposition of the floods that take place year after year, every year. You have fine silt that is being deposited. 
मोस्ट ऑफ दीज सॉइल्स आर बेसिकली क्ले टू लोमी इन नेचर एंड द सैंड कंटेंट इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एज यू मूव फ्रॉम द वेस्ट टूवर्ड्स द ईस्ट द प्रपोर्शन ऑफ द सैंड कंसिस्टेंटली डिक्रीजेस ऑल्सो इफ यू टॉक अबाउट द कलर ऑफ द सॉइल इट वेरीज फ्रॉम समवेयर नियर लाइट ग्रे टू अ काइंड ऑफ एश कलर्ड सॉइल एंड यू हैव वेरियस शेड्स एंड टेक्चर्स ऑफ द एलोवेल सॉइल दैट आर सीन The next important soil is the black soil. Black soil is also known as the uh, soil which is the regur soil. It is usually seen in the peninsular India, so the Deccan Plateau area. Most of the areas which it cover is the state of Maharashtra, Madhya Pradesh, Gujarat, Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Nadu, and the deltic regions of Godavari and Krishna. Now, since it's black, you can remember it as black and white contrast. So cotton grows very well in the black soil. Then you have sugar cane, jowar. another good crops which grow in the black soil now black soil is classically known for its wet nature but during the dry season it cracks now when it cracks it naturally creates the seepage of the water that could take place and therefore this soil is unique in itself because you have a kind of self flowing that occurs because of the slow absorption of the moisture that takes place it retains moisture for a very long period of time and as a result even during the dry months it can sustain very well now again this soil is rich in what alluvial soil we said it was rich in potash deficient in phosphorus black soil is rich in iron manganese limestone and alumina however it again lacks phosphorus besides that it also lacks uh, the nitrogen and the organic matter content that is present usually the soil is considered impermeable it is sticky in nature it is mainly a kind of loamy soil that is formed uh, and it is uh, very sticky specifically when it is wet during the dry month it shrinks and because it shrinks it creates the crack and from that crack you have the percolation of water that takes place so that's a unique characteristic of black soil the next is red and yellow soil so red soil because of the iron diffusion that takes place yellow because it is hydrated so this soil depends mainly on the rock structure if the rock structure is crystalline igneous rock then you would probably have red and yellow soil it's usually seen in the areas where you have less rainfall in the parts of deccan plateau in the south and south and the eastern sides so if we look on to the western ghats area it's mainly the red loamy that is present uh this soil is classic because if the particles are very fine and small it is fertile in nature but if the particles are coarse it is usually seen in a dry upland area and it's not fertile so very very important red and yellow soil is fertile only and only if the particles are very fine grained in nature this soil is again poor in nitrogen phosphorus and humus similar to your black soil so you have to remember this again laterite soil cashew nut tapioca are some of the good crops that could be grown in laterite soil it's present where you have very high rainfall high temperature conditions that are seen and during the tropical rain that occurs there is an intense leaching that takes place because of this leaching you have the soil that is seen usually this soil is not considered good for agriculture however uh, this soil is used for brick uh, or to make brick for housing constructions uh, la in latin we say the word later from which the laterite is made this later word itself means the brick and therefore uh, with the rain you have a lot of lime and silica that is washed away and the soils become rich in iron oxide aluminum compounds which are left behind so this soil is classically rich in aluminum and iron compounds that are seen also because of the high temperature and rainfall you have good amount of humus content uh, that that has basically moved off because of the high rainfall you have the movement that takes place and top humus flows away so this soil becomes poor in humus very very important to note it is also poor in nitrogen phosphate and calcium but as i said 
it this soil is rich in iron and aluminium that is left behind besides that it is also rich in potash so that's again very very important the next important soil that we would cover is arid soil arid soil is usually red to brown in color found in the sandy and the alkaline areas uh, even in the areas if you look on to the rajasthan where you have the didwana lake or the sambar lake you have lots of evaporation that takes place and because of that lot of evaporation you have salt that is found so common salt is processed by the means of evaporation in these arid soils this soil has less amount of nitrogen and an average amount of phosphate that is seen uh, you have a kind of conker layer formation that is seen in the bottom horizons now this conker layer does not allow the water to percolate down so there is a kind of limit for the water to flow downwards only if and if this soil is watered well with irrigation you can have vegetative growth that could be seen in this region characteristic of uh, the soil is mainly a kind of less humus and uh, uh, organic content that is seen and classically seen in the parts of western rajasthan the thar desert area that you very well know so conker layers because of the excessive calcium it does not allow the filtration or restricts the filtration of the water to takes place and that's very very important the next is saline soil saline soil is also known as usra soil a large proportion of sodium potassium and magnesium is seen this soil is not at all fertile not good for vegetation uh, mostly seen either in a dry climate salty region or in a kind of swampy region so it is also seen in the regions which are waterlogged also seen in the regions which are arid and semi arid so parts of western gujarat kutch area uh, the run of kutch is a good example then in the eastern regions you have sundarbans where you have the saline soil that is seen so excessive irrigation with dry climate uh, usually causes capillary action and this results in deposition of the uh, salt on the topmost layer and this deposition on the of the salt on the topmost layer has commonly been witnessed in the regions of punjab and haryana because of which the farmers in the region of punjab and haryana have been asked to add gypsum in order to avoid this problem of salinity that takes place so in order to remove this problem of salinity to maintain the ph you have the gypsum that is added to the soil in the regions of punjab and haryana the next is peaty soil it is a region where you have very heavy rainfall high humidity conditions a good growth of vegetation of course that is seen organic content is very high more than 50% up to 50% organic content usually a dark colored soil black soil that is seen mainly found in the regions of uttarakhand northern parts of bihar which bengal odisha and tamil nadu then we have the forest soil forest soil is a soil where you have good amount of rainfall that is seen commonly as a forest area that the name suggests so the structure and the texture of the soil is important usually loamy and silty in nature in the himalayas uh, this is considered a uh, soil with less humus and acidic ph or acidic content we could say and in the lower valley areas this is considered as a very fertile soil because you have a response to the development or the growth process that could take place for the soil the next is the issue of degradation and erosion now when i say soil degradation that means the quality of the soil is suffering so definitely the amount of nutrition is going down the depth of the soil is reducing you have the soil base that starts to vanish off and ultimately uh, when the soil is moving through the soil erosion takes away the top fertile layers of the soil and it affects the fertility of the soil so soil erosion why it is caused it could be caused due to human activity due to cutting of trees because trees do not have the roots that could bind the soil so the water would take away the top fertile soil also creation of new settlement urban regions also we talk about a lot of overgrazing activities that are seen so these are some of the simple causes that lead to soil erosion the factors that promote soil erosion are definitely wind water so in the region where you have very heavy rainfall or a steep slope you would have a higher amount of erosion that could be seen now two important erosions that you must be familiar with are sheet erosion and gully erosion sheet erosion means like a sheet so our top layer of the soil gets removed 
Now since the top layer is removed, it's one of the most fertile layers and it affects the fertility of the soil. The next is a gully erosion. Gully erosion is usually seen on the steeper slopes. So gullies deepen with the rainfall activity that is seen. You have deep ravines or badland topographies that are formed when you have excessive gullies that are seen. So classic example is the region of West Bengal, Tamil Nadu where you have Chambal ravines where you have lot of badland topography that is seen. Also what we are trying to do is we are trying to push on to the irrigation method so with better irrigation practices we can reclaim the soil for a longer time shifting from a chemical fertilizer to an organic fertilizer so uh, since organic fertilizer is less harmful to the soil so what we focus on is conservation of soil now nature has the laws to balance nature offers an opportunity without disturbing the existing balance so to maintain the fertility of the soil to prevent the erosion to improve the degradation of the soil what we need is the conservation of the soil the slope must not be uh, more than 15 to 25 percent if it is higher than that then definitely you have terrace farming that is done contour bunding you have regulated forestry agroforestry control grazing are some of the common techniques that could be used for conservation of soil as such we are also talking about check dams. Check dams reduce the gully erosion to a great deal. We are talking about the semi-arid areas where agroforestry could be practiced and soil could be conserved. Similarly, the land which is not fit for cultivation must be converted into pasture land. So this pasture land could be used for grazing for, by the animals. We have numerous such experiments which have been which are being done by Kazri. So that's the cent uh, the Central Arid Zone Research Institute at Jodhpur. So that has been doing numerous such activities in order to bring in more practices of agroforestry, converting the wastelands or the badlands into a grazing area. We are also focusing on conservation uh, efforts. So you have the Central Soil Conservation board that has been established by government of India and integrated land use planning which is very very important. So those were some of the most important topics that we have covered in this lecture. We'll be covering many further topics in the upcoming lectures. So stay tuned. Have a wonderful day ahead.